It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is senior social media. Joining me today is Carrie Fink and Kay Kaiser of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. And I want to make one additional point, viewers, today, the fact that both Carrie and Kay bring extensive experience in the radio and television industries, as well as care programs, social media, and they're qualified to speak about what we're going to talk about today. And hopefully I will be on the learning curve as are you, as we discuss today's topic, because it's becoming more apparent to me, the seniors, and especially those that care for seniors, have to do a much better job of being self-informed about what sources, resources, and capabilities are available to help them care for aging parents, friends, and themselves as we become a more rapidly aging county in the United States. So please pay particular attention today to what Carrie and Kay are going to talk about. Now, did I cover that, Carrie? Kay and I think Carrie? you did well. Good. Okay. Good. Excellent. I may not know that much about it, but I can talk. You're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm going to probably read a little bit from my script because I think it's important because our viewers need Kay and Carrie to know. So let's just talk first. Let's just talk about social media. You want to lead, Kay, Carrie? Sure. You know, social media gives us such a wonderful opportunity to get connected in a way that we've never had before. But if you think about it, we grew up in an era when you would have to make your long distance calls quick because the bill was running. You would think about to watch TV, you had to fiddle with rabbit ears. To listen to a radio, you had to find a transistor radio or something. Today, all of this is done from your computer, your tablet, or maybe even your smartphone. So you have an ability to connect with people, literally all your neighbors, people down the street, people down the, throughout the county, or literally uh, friends and family from around the world. And so social media gives us an opportunity to communicate in ways that never has been available to us before. And that's really good. And sometimes it can be dangerous. And we want to talk about both aspects of that throughout today. The good part is the communication. The bad part is that you have to be a little bit careful when you're dealing with people that you haven't met before. Yeah. Online. That's, but that's true. When we talk about our youth, huh? in my youth, my family was one of the families that had the telephone <laughs> in a radius area. So people wanted to... Uh -huh call on telephone, they came to our house to talk on a telephone. Now that may sound stupid to say in, in the way our whole system works today, folks, but it wasn't mm -hmm. that way back in the 40s mm -hmm. and the late 30s. It was an entirely different country as far as we're Kay, what would you add to what Carrie said? Well, I think, you know, you brought up a good point. And as far as people being able to communicate quickly, everything's right there. I know that when my daughter interned in Jerusalem, we did Skype, and it was she was right there on my computer screen. Mm -hmm. um, and how how far has that come? And uh -huh. you can now do that on your phone as well. But you're right; you do have to be careful because if you start connecting with someone that you're not mm -hmm. familiar with, that could result in some unforeseen measures. Well, I, I I think right now you're talking about the business of scams. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, if people aren't careful with how they use their phones, iPhone, iPad, mm -hmm. all this stuff. Right. Absolutely. You can open yourself up to privacy invasion and you can, you could you could lose everything. Mm -hmm. Even identity theft. Pardon? Mm -hmm. Even identity theft. Yes. yes. Right. Yeah, and that's very important. You know, everybody has heard the story about they call it the Nigerian lottery scam, you know, a rich oh, yeah. relative uh, somebody passed away and I'd have to have somebody in America to help uh, 
uh, facilitate this transaction. I'll gladly mm-hmm. pay you five million out of my hundred million if you'll do this for me. Right. But it always indicates that you have to pay a fee once you get into it. Those mm-hmm. are the things to be careful of. And and honestly, much of it is common sense. And it's just remembering to use that same that same level of discretion that you would use just meeting a person who came to your door that you would with meeting somebody online. So that's right. kind of the rough part of it. But really, for the most part, I think it's to our benefit to talk about the advantages and the pluses that social media gives us because there's so many ways that we can improve life for seniors. But before we get into that, sure. let me ask one question. Let's say you have the inquisitive person and they decide they want to open that email that's obviously a scam. What is the danger of opening that now what what do you provide to that person when you inquisitively open your email well there there are uh, uh, rather not nice people who use the opportunity for attachments you know it's like right. here open this I've sent you this have a look it always comes with some kind of intriguing uh, open this or you don't want to miss this and a lot of times what happens is somebody will access somebody's account that's been hacked mm-hmm. so it comes from a name of somebody that you might know but there's but you should look at that message and go does that sound like a message from this person because it'll have a provocative title like oh you don't want to miss this here's a really funny video but there's nothing else there and then when you go to click the attachment now you found your computer has been infected with a virus that's or worse yes. yet something that's called a Trojan, which may be trying to find your identity right. to to hack your bank or whatever. So essentially, your inquisitiveness has just opened Pandora's box. Yeah, it could mm-hmm. be. And that's why you really have to look at this and go, you know, there is a little bit more danger than a piece of junk mail in your mailbox. You know, if you get the mail in your mailbox, you can say, well, this doesn't apply to me and you can toss it. Toss. But you do want to take that extra step when you open an email and 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 really look at it and go, is this really from uh, is this really from a person I know and trust? There are all the stories about, you know, the distant relative who's been jailed someplace and they need you to send bail money. That's another scam. And then we find out later that that person doesn't really exist or they were never near that. So there are a lot. That's probably worthy of a show by itself. Just but, when we uh, talk about these things. The safest thing is, to, uh, I would say, if 100 percent of the time you just deleted that, you'd probably do yourself a favor. Yeah, if it's mm-hmm. in your spam folder, yeah. no question. Absolutely. And even the tricky spams that come across, just look at it and go, does this sound like this person that I know is writing to me? Yeah. I have not met too many people in my life that are going to give me $1,000 <laughs> right. out of the clear blue sky. Right. Right. It's just like for years, we took a woman to church, and every time she got in the car on Sunday morning, she was convinced she'd won the publisher's clearinghouse, mm-hmm. and she was going to get $10 million. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I think one of the common denominators in these scams are if anybody is going to give you money, they're going to give you money. They're not going to ask you to pay anything for it. So if there's any time that something rings like, oh, send us $50 processing fee or something, say, just deduct mm-hmm. it from the million dollars you're going to send me. I'm happy to t- take 200 out of it. <laughs> no, just send yeah. me the rest. <laughs> I, tell you, I just delete them. I don't yeah. know. Because I, I don't yeah. know. And just like most of the people watching this show, they don't know any more than I really know yeah. about uh, truthfulness, uh, how the system works mm-hmm. and everything. So you do yourself a great favor if you just delete the thing and wait for the for the letter to come where, you know, somebody's going to tell you something. But mm-hmm. that was the negative side. Let's t- you wanted to talk about the positive part. Yeah, I do. And I, was, I just was going to close it up with a postscript. There's a joke that runs in our family. Every once in a while, somebody would say, I read that on the Internet. It must be true. Okay. <laughs> you know? That's been around. So, so, so that's <laughs> yeah. always a good caveat right. whenever you're digging on the Internet. But let's do talk about the positive side of the Internet because there are so many things. You know, one of the things that we've talked about here before in some of the calls that Kay works with were seniors. There, there's a, Everybody, we're social beings, and we love to get together. And a lot of times – one of the one of the challenges for seniors are if they're alone and they don't necessarily have people that they're interacting with that's one of the benefits of social media there's an opportunity for us to connect with people who share the same things in fact one of the founders of google he he called this uh 
theory, he talked about tribes. He talked about people like we organize ourselves based on our interests. Like mm -hmm. for those of us that are, you know, are into our church and the things we do, that's a, that would be a tribe. But there could mm -hmm. be a, another tribe could be I'm a big space fan. So I love paying attention to everything that goes on with the things that go on with rocket launches. Well, there's a tribe of people who all connect for those kind right. of things. And so almost any interest, in fact, there's social media sites out there, uh, one called Pinterest, which is where everybody gets together around a certain topic. Like it could be somebody who likes latch hook rugs and there's a whole community out there just about that. So whatever the thing is that you enjoy, there's probably social media where you can interact with people who are really like your electronic pen pals who are into the same thing. But how do you find time to do all that stuff? <laughs> how do you do that? Well, one of the things we talked about, Facebook was really, I think, uh, a kind of an innovative game changer in this because people people started to realize that they can connect. And now there's, uh, there's this whole thing where instead of like what happens with traditional media, where media feeds you what they think you want to see, you look at your Facebook wall and you decide and can look at the things that are of interest directly to you. So it's all presented and now you pick and choose, which theoretically would make you more efficient about how you use your media, but it could go both ways. <laughs> well, I that. was going to, you know, since you're talking about the Facebook so much, you know, I'd like to really kind of get out to the information on how important is a like. You hear this all the time. Like us on Facebook. What's that mean, Carrie? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, I asked you about that. No, no, it's, it's a good thing. Would, uh, but there, it's important. There's a, uh, it's almost become like a, a notch on your belt, if you will, how many likes on Facebook. And that's typically for companies or organizations. And it's it's a it's a kind of a rough indicator of how many people are interacting. So if you just started a new business, you write all your Facebook friends, say, like my new business, right. go to my page and like my page. And so, so a quick, quick, fast barometer is, well, this this organization had hundreds of thousands of likes, so that must be a big national organization. And then you might find a, you know, a local organization that has 500 likes. It's not really a, uh, uh, you have to always put that in context, but it just meant somebody took a moment, clicked the button and says, right. I like that. But that also brings that Facebook page up higher in the ranking too. Well, that's true. That we get into a whole discussion yeah. of search engine rankings, which means right. when you type something in on Google, what you're going to see first, Google tries to figure out what you meant by the thing that you asked your computer to search. You know, I want to know mm -hmm. good places to eat in my neighborhood. Well, it's going to try to match what you just asked and it will use an algorithm that includes some of the things that uh, uh, indicate relative popularity. How many other people have searched? If you've ever sat on your Google and you start to to write in a search and all of a sudden you see it's finished the sentence or maybe gives you a couple of choices, that means somebody else asked the same question. I you just did. heard on the news the other night, there was a purported use by a politician of buying these likes in order to get themselves higher in the mm -hmm. ranking. Oh, That's absolutely. Possible. Oh, yeah, definitely. There are organizations and companies who do that. In fact, uh, I just saw a thing on, on a newscast just the other day where they're talking about, you know, people go to like Amazon.com and see what product ratings are. And there are companies oh, out yeah. there who go and buy and pay people to write reviews. reviews. So you always, you have to, you know, it's the old caveat emptor. You have to use your own com common sense and, and just understand mm -hmm. That that's the reality of the world that we Okay, do. our organization is designed to help people, right. helping seniors. Right. We have entered into LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. We've entered into Facebook, Twitter. You've designed a new website. I listened to both of you talk about all mm -hmm. getting onto social media. And, and we've done it under the guise of making more people aware of our capability to provide them good information Help, help them be educated about good services available for seniors. Right. Mm -hmm. um, what are the dangers that we're facing in trying to do this? Are there any? I don't think for us as an organization, mm -hmm. they really are because you're so careful to screen 
uh, the, the, the prospective uh, partners who come in and, and our businesses, you want to make sure that they're quality, that they're sincere. Okay. And that, mm-hmm. so I think you're doing a vetting process that by the time it reaches when we present things out on the media, you've already covered that. Now, some of the things that we're doing, what's wonderful about the opportunities that we have is, as you know, and you've talked about before, we do all the television that you can regularly see uh, on regularly scheduled Bright House television on several different channels. Uh, but you can also access all of that material on our website, on our YouTube channel, and you can pick a show by topic. I want to see a show about diabetes and Search. you can find a show or several shows where you may have covered that topic. You can go very specifically for what you, for what you want to do. Like uh, re- recently we had, there's a new category that that's, that that's very interesting that you were talking about uh, called elder mediation. Well, that's a new topic for most of us. We've mm-hmm. not heard that. Well, now there's a show. So if you maybe had a son or daughter that was living uh, say in California, you can say, let me give you the link to my YouTube channel so you can see what this is all about. You can watch the same program I just watched. Well, let me ask you a question. When you say worldwide YouTube, mm-hmm. I, I, I also heard on, uh, I watched on television last night that uh, this show is seen in 80 countries. Mm-hmm. Would that show, when you just said a mediation, would that, well, since it's going to be on worldwide YouTube, would that be shown all over the world? It, well, any place there's an internet connection that right. the government or something hasn't blocked it out. So theoretically, yes. So in Mumbai, whatever that is, India, whatever yeah, is, right. they could they could watch our show. Absolutely, they can. And they can get our website and watch it there too. Absolutely, and see all that's free because, like we were joking about before, you were talking about people lining up to use the phone in your house. I remember yeah. at, at Thanksgiving, you know, uh, our parents would make us line up by the phone because we had like thirty seconds to talk to Grandma and Grandpa because this was very expensive. <laughs> Long distance call, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Well, that's how we've been. Okay. Carrie's monopolized the talk today. <laughs> How about you? Well, what are you seeing here as an information specialist? Well, you know, I find I've got to bring up because each week we have a computer class here because mm-hmm. we've had donated computers. I was computers. going to ask about that. And I see the development of watching because I had to teach the class last Wednesday. And I was showing the ladies some different things on the web and they said, wow. I never knew that. And it's just the excitement of mm-hmm. being educated and, and learning this new experience and skill and seeing like, oh, my goodness, I can put a picture in here. I can cut and paste and put this and change the color and everything. But the excitement of the technology and now looking at the fact that they they feel Oh, wow. I just opened up a whole world that I never knew existed. And I want to emphasize to our viewers, you do not have to be an experienced typist to do this. If I can learn to do it, folks, you can learn to do it. Now, I don't know all the nuances. Every once in a while, I'll call Carrie or Kay to try to figure out what I've done wrong. And the most (laughs) aggravating thing to me, and I had to learn it real quick, if I'm typing a long document, I save it. (laughs) That's true. It it was Absolutely irritating to put, you know, a half hour or an hour into a doc and not save the darn thing and hit the wrong button, have it disappear. Right. But, you know, every time I did that, when I had to retype it, I made it shorter and probably was better. No, it's true. <laughs> I, I, but I, I still, using the Internet has got to be like anything else. It's got to be smart mm-hmm. how you do mm-hmm. it. You can't, you just can't open yourself up to uh, thievery. Right. Right. Okay. What are some of the other things, especially now, we've de- you've designed our website, mm-hmm. redesigned it. What are some of the advantages you both can tell our viewers about with our new enhanced website? What do we bring to the table now? <clears throat> well, just like we started talking about, I think one of the most critical things, because it's part of our mission statement at, help, uh, at Helping Seniors, we want to be outbound with information that's useful to seniors. And mm-hmm. obviously, while our focus is for people right here in Brevard County, we know, for example, that we have a lot of snowbirds who are here part of the year, and then they're, they go up north for the other part of the year, or they may have relatives in other parts of the country. So again, like we were talking about with the TV programs, the radio programs, the print articles, if they're not in the town this week, it's great because they can still access it from wherever they are. Number two, if 
somebody sees an article like, oh, my aunt has this condition, but she lives in Oregon. Well, fine. Let me email her the link. And now she can get the benefit of this information and take action on it in her area. So I was just going to say, you know, we've actually had calls from <clears throat> other counties mm -hmm. asking us to see if we can help them. Right. So that all of that has gotten out. And you know, I also to say, please go to our website if there's anything else you want to learn about, because you can search mm -hmm. and you can pull up that specific information, right. whether it's print, TV, or radio. And we already well, have. I, I also look at uh, with the experience that you two bring to what we've done. I had a lot of ideas. I didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. But what you all have done have opened up new ways to communicate to the extent that right now we have 22 sponsors for the uh, mm -hmm. for our media programs. Mm -hmm. right. But almost every one of those sponsors is in some way connected to elder care, senior Absolutely. care. Right. And uh, the, the organizations that are our media sponsors, you get calls, Kay, and mm -hmm. many times you refer the caller to those people to provide the service, which because we already know. Right. They have a, a vested interest, not just making money, right. but a vested interest in providing a right service for a senior exactly. citizen. And that's important. And I often tell callers, I say, you know, I'm going to refer you to a couple people. And the reason why is because I've spoken with them. I've had nothing but positive response coming back from others who have gone to them. But the bottom line is they're trustworthy and they're not going to take advantage of you. OK, see, you're it's, really talking about relationships. It really the is. The point is that you you because of the work that that's already gone into bringing and and like we said, vetting out these these different uh, people who are part of uh, the helping seniors. And then the fact that you're connecting with people who are like minded, there's really mm -hmm. that you're facilitating an ability. And that's what social networking at its best is about. You're getting mm -hmm. people who have similar goals, similar needs, similar uh, objectives together for common purpose. And that's what's so exciting about watching what's happening with the advocacy program right oh, now, yes. because the whole opportunity is now somebody comes here, they get the vision, they understand, they've read the article. Think about how many calls you get. I read the article mm -hmm. in Senior Scene Magazine. I want to be part of this thing. And right. then they get connected and they'll put on their Facebook to their community, this is important. You need to get connected up in here. It's how we're doing with the electronic how, service. 